Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Aspiring Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Hamza Chowdhury. And in this video, I'd like to talk to you about the most exciting IPO that we've seen in quite a while, Airbnb. If you haven't stayed at an Airbnb or you don't know what the company does, it's basically changing the way we stay. And the hotel industry is the way we've known it. It's probably changing because of people like Airbnb. I actually listened to the founder story a couple years ago. It's very interesting. It actually did start in, in, in San Francisco. And essentially, they, you know, the, the person was unable to locate sort of a hotel room uh, for a convention or a project. And, and they realized that, you know, staying at people's homes, residences, obviously, there's a lot of rooms that you, you may have in your personal home um, that aren't being used. And, and maybe even, you know, places, apartments, things like that. And I've also heard different stories from people who, you know, talk about how you can, you know, rent an apartment and then sort of throw it on Airbnb. Not all landlords are about it, but if you convince them that you're going to, you know, keep the and maintain the property, you can actually rent Airbnbs on properties you don't even own, which is a whole different topic that we could talk about in one of our entrepreneurial, um, you know, videos. But in any case, it was exciting. You know, we had AI, we had DoorDash and, you know, the one that really felt like something that we would want to hold and be really interested in was Airbnb, at least for me and myself. So, what I wanted to do was, this is going to be obviously our first video. Um, I do publish videos on TradingView. There is a link below if you want to join the platform, if you wanted my thoughts the, the day of. And so I mentioned that I would do a Sunday video for you guys. And so for our Sunday update for Airbnb, you know, on the first day, you know, this thing came out and, and you know, the IPOs have been completely you know, extremely overpriced. And so it felt extremely heavy. We traded, I think it was like 21 million shares in less than 15 minutes. And so it came out, I believe it was around 144 and, and it just got ramped up. So I, I did uh, participate in that first 15 minutes, uh, did a scalp play, probably could have held on um, for the bigger meat of the bone. And, and that's one of the things I talk about too. Generally, I, I'd like to give advice in my, in my sort of stock update videos is, you know, as a day trader, sometimes you fall in the habit of bottom ticking and top ticking. So you're waiting for sort of the best price, the best entries. And a lot of times when the tape is heavy and the stock is moving, you know, extremely fast, it's really hard to bottom tick because when you're bottom tick, you're waiting for that bottom price. But if a stock, for example, is tanking or if a stock, if you're looking to short and you're trying to top tick, a lot of those moves are really quick, right? They're quick bounces. So if you miss it, you could basically be off a dollar or two dollars or so depending on what stock you're trading and instantly like you know you see that every time in tesla if it starts to tank it bounces right off a level it literally goes up at like 10 bucks in, in, a, in a minute and so what they did is you know a lot of people participated they bought into it they were waiting for it they ramped it up and you can see right here right what do they do double top and they flushed it right back down and what's interesting and i'd like to show you show you this um let's just look at it actually on the, on the five minute chart is, is what was going on. So, so people were, were participating, but they were also getting soaked here, right below VWAP. And we know that when we're below the purple line, that it's a bearish sign. And so the people who were trading here were thinking that, oh, I'm getting a dip buy, right? So I can actually buy this back up. And really it just felt like, right, that this was extremely overpriced. It was selling off. They were soaking more people here. And then we, we sold off even more. And then you can see here, right? We almost had a one, two, three, four times. We bounced off like that 141 level. So that was a really key level I mentioned in, in my video on trading view was that that was a good solid bounce. And then when we tested that multiple times, then it looked like that's where we made the attempt to VWAP. But you may notice something interesting, right? Is we didn't even actually test the VWAP level, right? So again, with that push, you know, the massive sell off, the buyback, the push up, you can tell we weren't even able to cross VWAP. So we knew that people were bearish on the stock and they sold it off. And what was really interesting is you can't really look left, right? When you're trading an IPO. So you don't know, well, where's the bottom? Where do I come in? Where should I participate? So my levels that I key to key out here was I actually wanted to dip by at 139, right? Because when you're in trading in the 140s and the 150s and the 160s, guys, you see 130s, you're going to get people to start to panic, right? Like I bought you know, let's say somebody bought like 160, 155. Now you're at 130, you're starting to panic. So I was waiting for it, it didn't come, which was fine. And what was really interesting is I started, you know, hearing about people getting short sort of pre-market here on Friday. And, you know, I didn't really quite believe that that was sort of going the move here, excuse me, right here. 
uh, people were going pre-market, they were looking at these levels, for example, this level right here, uh, 139, and it just felt very light. Like if you were trading pre-market, you can see the volume was extremely light. And so I was actually building up a long position around 139, which is where I wanted. And it was, it was perfect. It worked out great with the 139 came. So I was actually building up a long position and I noticed that, you know, some people were trying to get a short position and I was like, guys, when you're doing a short position, keep in mind that shorts want to ramp this thing up. If you're already flush down to 139, where's the meat of the bone, right? When you're at 165 and you flush to 140, that's a 25 point move. If you're already trading on 139 on an IPO price of 144 the day before, how many more points can you get? So what I was expecting and what I mentioned in my video from Thursday was that they were going to ramp this thing up. But what was interesting is they didn't ramp it up at like four or five in the morning, which they normally do. They actually ramped this up. Look at this first green candle, right? Right before 6 a.m. So this is, you know, Pacific time. So this would be considered about nine o'clock Eastern time. And so I actually, I had a long position going in and I, I saw that they started to ramp up. Now, if you're trading the stock, right, where do you go long? If you're a day trader, this is ideally where you would go long if you're day trading. It's one, the 144 level where you're breaking the pre-market highs, but you're already getting that in the pre-market. So it was already starting to push up. And like I said, it was trading extremely, extremely light in pre-market. I was like, where are the traders? Like, where's the volume? And so all of a sudden you get this push up and it's not like a push and a pullback. It's literally just a push from 140 all the way up and it ramps up all the way up to over 150. So my, my target was actually to, to you know, uh, buy at 139 and to sell out the push on 150, which is what I mentioned in my Thursday video. And it just shocked me because how many people thought that this would have been the short when really you want to ramp up and then you want to unwind. Okay. So you ramp up to 150 and then you sell off back. And so you can see if you're here and you have a high of 150, 150, you can see they sold it off and they got down here to 144. And so when you're short and let's say, you know, you sort of cover around here. Now what you're looking for is a break of this level. And so the whole day was just sort of, you know, trading sideways, right? We traded sideways again, people shorts covering, buying it back. And then we're trading by VWAP and people are waiting. Okay. This thing's going back to 165. This thing's going back to one, you know, 55. And so they wait and it just goes sideways and nothing really happens. And then look at this level guys, look at how many we traded one, two, three, it looks like seven candles, so about 40 minutes worth of the 150. So everyone's just waiting, it's buying, it's getting soaked. There's all the short sellers, they're basically collecting all your bids. And then what do they do? In a matter of, right, 25 minutes or half an hour, we went from 150 all the way down here to 145, okay? So we lost about 10%, um, or excuse me, five, $5 on that move. But then look what also happens. We just had a minor correction and then we had it bigger. And so we had a bigger flush. And then what they did is they still didn't flush this thing down. So again, you can look at the key levels here. We're at 143 from 151. So we had a $10 move here. And then we bought it back up. We tested VWAP again, couldn't break it. Like we couldn't break it on Thursday. And so we soaked a lot of people here at the bid. And then what they did, this was the major flush. So this is where the shorts really wanted to participate. Now, if you got short early pre-market, you got ran over, right? So you got ran over, you had to you know, cover your position, the stock kept moving up. And then this was really the selling point. So guys, you see all these volume bars here, all they were doing was soaking people up. And then look at this vol the volume bar here, right? And in this matter of this 15 minutes, Look at the volume here. This bar is extremely, it's like the biggest volume bar in the five minute chart in the whole day, right? And look and look what they did, they sold it off. So they sold it off from all the way from, you know, a high of 147 all the way down to 135, right? The low was 135 and that was done. That's like a, you know, 11 point move in a matter of 15 minutes. So that's where the shorts were. And that's what they were doing is they were soaking people, they thought they were going to flush here. They didn't. And then they essentially soaked more people and then they just dropped it and they sold it off all the way down to 135. And then essentially it, it traded flat and it traded flat going into, into the post market. So if I was trading this tomorrow and if you're a long-term trader guys, you know, clearly the stock hasn't found its bottom. So you're going to want to just, you know, continue to buy shares. I mentioned anything under the IPO price is going to be a bonus. Um, but that's a key level there, right? Is that, what we want to do is we want to test that 135 level multiple times to validate it as a support. 
And in my in my feeling is just knowing the way that IPOs act, you know, this thing's clearly selling off. People are taking profits. Um, it's way overvalued. And so don't be surprised if we retest the 135 level multiple times. So if you are a dip buyer, again, it didn't go to 135 exact. It went to 135 10 cents, which is why you can't bottom tick. But that is definitely a key level to look uh, to be validated. Okay. So coming into Monday, I'd expect us to validate that. And again, guys, because this is a newer stock and there's no history and there's no way to look left, we could potentially even trade lower. So if I was dip buying, I would definitely, like I said, dab into around 135 and then continue to see where this thing really wants to go before it starts to, to raise up. Now, I mentioned in my other previous video too that, you know, the 160s will come eventually, no doubt. Airbnb is going to be, you know, one of the leaders in this sort of, you know, reform of, of hotels. But, you know, right now with COVID and all the things going on, and of course the way overpriced IPO, we need to just get the profit takers out and then we need to get fresh money. And a lot of the people who are just sitting on the sidelines waiting for this thing to calm down and, and possibly even come down, right? I mean, if you're buying at 135, compared to the person who bought at 165, you're getting like a 20%, you know, haircut. So with that said, guys, um, look for the 135 to validate. You wanna see multiple bounces. Like I said, if you're day trading, that's what I would be doing if you're doing a long position. There's no reason, you know, why not to add some shares to the 135 level. And then again, looking left, let's see what we're having issues is this key level right here. Okay. So if I'm a breakout trader, I'm looking at the 150 level. And once we can break out to 150 uh, north of that and, and sustain that and bounce off of it, then, you know, of course, we're going to get back into the 160s. But I really think we got to flush a lot of people out. We got to get um, a solid bottom, which, you know, might be probably in the low 130s. And then once we start to trade up, we can look at the key levels here that we couldn't break, which appears to be around the 150-ish range. And then once we break through the 150, like I said, we can get back up. And, and I, I see this thing being, you know, a complete value, high value company. Again, it's it's leading the reform. So if you have any questions or comments, guys, list them below. I wish you, as always, the best of luck. It is a holiday season, so don't forget just to spend time with friends and family. And I wish you guys the best of luck as always. And if you enjoyed the video, please do hit the like and subscribe button. As always, I do mention that we are a 100% free content channel. We don't sell you any chat rooms, programs, or anything like that. Uh, we just, we're just here to help people be successful at their trading and just becoming an entrepreneurial in general. All right, guys. Well, best of luck. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.